Hi. Good afternoon. How is your day going? Good morning. If you're joining me from the other parts of the world, good evening. No, I don't know where you're joining from, but wherever you're joining from, this is Growth Habits with Ngozi. And I'm so glad to have you here today. I'm so happy that you joined me this afternoon. So how is it with you? How is it where you are? What's happening with you? This is Growth Habits once again, coming to you every Tuesday afternoon, 12 noon Nigerian time. 12 noon Nigerian time. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. So here we are once again. Yes. Um, and we started our series on emotional growth. Um, so we've been talking about emotional growth for, I think, three. Yeah, this is the fourth session. Yeah, this is the fourth session that um, we're talking on our series on emotional growth. Um, for some reason, yeah, okay, I think that's better. It seems so dark initially. Yes, yeah, so we've been talking about emotional growth for the past three sessions. This is the fourth session in the series. So um, the first session, we just did a general introduction to emotional intelligence because um, emotional intelligence is basically the way to grow emotionally by having emotional intelligence, by being able to understand our emotions and um, how it works. Uh, good afternoon, Ngozi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, if you are joined, just let me know that you are here. Yes, thank you. Welcome, Nature. I'm glad you're fine. Well done. Um, as you join, let me know where you're joining me from. Even when you're watching it on the replay, please do let me know where you're joining me from. And um, Yes, so I was trying to give a recap of what we have done on this emotional growth series. And we are concentrating on emotional intelligence because that is what will help you grow emotionally. And we all need to grow emotionally, to be very honest. We all need it. Um, nobody that um, can make progress, really, if your emotions are not in check. If you're not able to understand your emotions, it will always um, be a problem. It will always be an issue for you if you're not able to handle your emotions. Um, Tony Afunanya, welcome. Glad to have you this afternoon. I'm so glad you chose to join us. All right. So I was telling us, I do try to do a recap of what we have done so far in this emotional intelligence series. So the first session in this series, which was um, session 22, yeah, 22, session 22, um, we just generally talked about emotional intelligence. Um, and we agreed that includes the ability to recognize, the ability to interpret, the ability to regulate your emotions. That is what is um, encompassed in emotional intelligence. And you can see why it is very important. Just the definition alone tells you why you need to have this uh, for you to grow. Um, the next um, session we did, session 23, we began to break down the different aspects of emotional intelligence. And we talked about self-awareness. And that is being able to understand who you are, why you feel how you feel yeah because um if we don't understand our feelings we can't harness them we can't harness them and we need to be able to harness our feelings we need to be able to harness them to to properly channel them yeah because if you if you don't understand what you're feeling how do you channel it properly okay so that was um self-awareness right yes that was self-awareness session 23 and um, just being able to recognize and understand your emotions um, being able to know why I feel like this because truly when we don't understand it we are somehow doomed I don't want to, I don't know if that's the right word but we keep repeating the circle of events that happen in our lives because we've not learned how um, why we feel the way we feel about certain things 
um, people will always annoy us. People will always do the wrong things. Always. It's not it's always. It's a given. It's your reaction that determines whether tomorrow that thing will happen again most times. Yeah. So when you are able to overcome an emotion, when you are able to conquer an emotion, its effect on you is almost zero at a point. Okay, so um, just give me a second. I need to turn off something that's making noise here. Okay. Did I? Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, so that was session 23, self-awareness. Then session 24, which was last week, we talked about self-regulation. Now, this goes beyond just knowing and understanding your emotions and being able to control them. Being able to regulate how you react. Being able to um, monitor and manage your emotions. And it goes beyond just um, your emotions, but also even your thoughts, even the things you're thinking, being able to manage them. That was what we discussed last week. And we saw that it's possible. It's not an impossibility. It is possible to manage your emotions. It just takes work. It just takes time. So it can be done. It, sometimes, you know, it looks like, how do I manage their emotions? How do I manage them? But it is possible to rein in your emotions and control how you react to certain things. All right. So that is the recap of what we have done so far on this emotional growth, emotional intelligence series. Okay. I th did I mention it last week? Probably not. I'm not sure. The next series we are going to go into once we are through with this emotional emotional growth series will be emo um, spiritual growth. Yes, mm, that's I'm so looking forward to that series because I, 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 I won't even be the one to handle those ones. No, I'm going to bring some people who will um, talk to us on um, our spiritual growth. Okay, so um, welcome Kelechi. Good to have you here, Kelechi. Ubuka, I'm always tempted to call you your maiden name <laughs> before your husband will come and uh, take you back. So welcome, glad to have you this afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. All right, so um, today we're going to talk about empathy as um, part of the emotional intelligence series. Empathy. Now, um, empathy is basically your ability to understand another person's thoughts, another person's emotions, another person's feelings. Remember that self-awareness, self-regulation had to do with you understanding your own emotions, your own feelings, your own thoughts, your own reactions, and being able to monitor and control them and regulate them. Empathy is your being able to understand and Basically, yeah, understand another person's emotions, another person's feelings. So you can't manage another person's emotions. You can't manage another person's feelings. It's difficult, but you can manage your own. But empathy is your ability to understand another person's emotions, another person's feelings. That is empathy, which is different from sympathy. It's not the same. They are two different um, um, things. In empathy, you understand why people are feeling what they are feeling. You understand why people are reacting the way they are reacting. And you are able to basically put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. Now, the difference between sympathy and empathy is that in sympathy you understand you understand oh it's shy she's feeling bad uh, because so so and so happened but you are not able to put your person yourself in that person's shoes and when you are feeling sympathy for them you're not able to put yourself in their shoes but in empathy you are able to feel 
what they are feeling. Let me use that expression. So Chuku Oti, welcome. I'm glad you chose to join us this afternoon. I hope you're having a good day so far. So yes, empathy is your ability to understand people's emotions and to an extent feel what they are feeling. Um, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. It's difficult to be empathetic with someone that's going through something you have not gone through. It's more difficult because you don't really know what is happening with them. But it's possible. I just said it's difficult, but it is possible to empathize with someone that's going through something you have never gone through before. It's very, very possible. If you understand emotions and how emotions work, if you've taken the time to even understand your own emotions, okay, I'm so glad you're enjoying the topic. Yeah, thank you. If you're able to understand your own emotions and how your emotions work, and you're able to understand what makes you react, the way you react or what makes you do the things you do, it's easier to be empathetic to someone else. It's easier to understand why someone else is feeling what they are feeling. Yeah. Now, um, it's not an easy thing. If anybody tells you it's easy to be empathetic, it's not. Sympathy is easier. Sympathy is easier to handle. I can, you know, sympathize with you on your loss. For example, you lost someone. I've not lost anyone. I don't know what's happening to you. I can sympathize with you. Oh, so sorry. Um, you know, don't feel too bad, you know. That is sympathy. But if you're empathetic, you will not tell the person not to feel too bad because you really don't know what's happening with them, one. And um, you'll be able to kind of feel what they are feeling and know that right now what they need is don't feel too bad. What they need is your silence. I don't know, you know, this is something that I've seen that people don't understand, especially when it comes to grief. We don't understand that someone that is grieving at a point does not need your words. They just need you to be there. Empathy is being able to understand that, to know that at this point, this person does not even need me to say anything. They just need me to be there. My physical presence is something. And it's also able to understand that this person does not need you telling them, don't cry. You know, there are times that we do this a lot, including me, especially in situations of grief. When we see somebody grieving and they are weeping, we keep telling them, don't cry. <laughs> Pastor Favor, <laughs> welcome, ma. welcome, ma. welcome. Glad you joined me this afternoon. So, you know, we tell them, don't cry. Don't cry, don't cry. You know, be strong. Empathy means understanding that at that point, the person needs to cry. There are times they need to cry. There are times they don't need to cry. But empathy is being able to understand that right now, this person needs to cry it out. Or right now, this person needs to talk it out. Or right now, this person just needs me to sit with them. That is empathy. And um, there are different types of empathy, actually. There are different components of empathy. But um, generally, like I said, we find it difficult to be empathetic with people. We, and we see their pain. We see it, but we don't feel it with them. We see people's pain. Oh, this person lost their job. Hey, yeah, they're feeling bad. And it ends there. We're not able to put ourselves in their situation and understand right now this person just needs a friend. Or right now this person needs me to say something uplifting. Or right now this person needs me to not say anything. I, I keep coming back to this not saying anything. Because most times we as people, we don't realize that silence is actually helping. 
there are situations where what that person needs is not for you to say a word say nothing say nothing so empathy is being able to put ourselves in other people's shoes and feel what they are feeling yes we cannot fully feel it because we are not the ones going through it as i said from the beginning it's easier if it's a pain you have gone through it's easier to be empathetic but it doesn't mean that we are not able to be empathetic with people whose pains we have not gone through we've not experienced the same thing okay but we have experienced feelings and we understand how things go. I give always give this example as much as possible. We had a an incident that happened in our house, and we lost someone, very young man, very dear to um, to us. And people came as usual to come and oh sympathize. People came to sympathize, but in their sympathizing. I don't want to be mean and say 100%, but <laughs> at least 90% of the people that came to sympathize could not empathize. They couldn't feel what I was feeling. They couldn't understand what was happening to me. They didn't know that sometimes they needed to just come and shut their mouths. Because many of them will come and be, you know, what happened? Tell us how. Oh my God. You know, I know. I didn't need to keep repeating that story. You understand? I didn't need to, be, to repeat that story over and over at a point. There was a time I needed to say it so that I can be free, so that my heart can be relieved of the grief. Yes. But there was a point I just needed somebody to just stay. Nobody understood that. The only person that even kind of understood it was my mom i don't forget you know she's the only person that would at times just say it's okay don't talk it's all right now i don't know i don't think she she, didn't, she has not experienced a loss like that she had not but i assume that she had worked on you know being empathetic and she understood that it's not every time someone needs to talk Okay, so um, that is like a very personal experience for me. So, and to be honest, till today, which is very strange for me, <laughs> I remember the people that came. I remember the people that said things that hurt me without realizing they were hurting me. They thought they were sympathizing with me. But the things they said hurt me more than helped me. I still remember it. I'm not remembering it with pain because truly I'm not remembering it with pain but I remember it and it makes me careful in dealing with those people because I feel they don't have feelings I feel they don't have feelings I'm going to say it's something not to be remembered we have to remember we just should not remember with pain we have to remember we can't forget it's difficult truly to totally forget things that happen to us is difficult and it doesn't happen in most situations the thing is to remember it without pain to remember it without all the emotions the bad emotions that came with it truly honestly i i, I praise myself <laughs> i praise myself that i'm able to remember that incident i'm able to remember the people that came i'm able to remember the things they said that did that hurt me then and i'm able to remember it now and it's like you know stories i can tell it like a story i always tell people this is the sign that you have forgiven it's not all this drama we do it's not the people never apologize though to be clear they, i'm sure some of them did not even realize what they did because the opportunity to actually tell them didn't come up then and after a while it just didn't make sense to begin to tell them anything but right now i remember those things and it's stories stories to be told so that is it it's not that we should we can we can remember things that happen to us because inside them there are lessons we should learn so by remembering we recall the lessons and we apply 
the lessons, but um, we don't carry them in our hearts. They are no longer hot for us. Okay, so Aozo uh, Koli, welcome, welcome. Glad that you're here this afternoon. All right, so um, I was trying to talk about the components of empathy. Welcome, Chibika Mitch, our governor to be. <laughs> yes, welcome. I'm glad you joined me this afternoon. Welcome. Yes, um, components of empathy. Um, there's, I think, three components that um, people that have studied emotional intelligence, studied empathy, came up with. And those three components are cognitive empathy. Um, am I forgetting the second? Emotional, yes. Emotional empathy and compassionate empathy. And generally, it's as expected that um, we should have all three aspects of um, all three components of empathy. But um, I don't know if it's possible for us to have all three, but it's expected that we should have aspects of all three. We should have a combination of two, at least, working in our lives. Good afternoon, Chidike. I'm glad that you join us today. How is Madame? I hope people are settling in well. All right, so cognitive empathy. I'm going to read the definition of it, then I will discuss it. It says cognitive empathy simply is knowing how the other person feels and what they might be thinking. Simply knowing how the other person feels and what they might be thinking. That is cognitive empathy. And... This is not yet even putting yourself in the person's shoes yet. It's just understanding what they are feeling, knowing what they are feeling. Oh, welcome, Florence. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, knowing what they are feeling, understanding what people feel, and possibly what they are thinking. Um, I was having a discussion with my mom the other day, and I was telling her some people um, from our place and my... Um, assessment I'm, I'm looking for the right word my assessment of them and my relationship with them and she was surprised because she's like how do you know this thing about this person how do you know that this person feels this way so um i told her that it, i when i meet people maybe because i'm quiet i don't quickly attach myself to people i don't quickly you know make friends i i i sit and i assess both the vibes you are giving out and the words you are saying, I assess all and I put them together, then I know how to relate with you. But when I told her that she was really surprised, but it's something that over the years I've kind of honed. So I'm able to sit with you in normal situation, normal conversation. I might not say anything to you, you are just the one talking, or I might talk to you irrelevant you know what happens in that interaction but i'm able to sit with you and i'm able to assess to a large extent the kind of person you are and it helps me in dealing with people because now that i've assessed you and understood to an extent what you're thinking and possibly why you are thinking it i know how to react to you and that is part of what is required for us to be empathetic we need to be able to know how people feel and possibly how they are thinking we have to be able to um, just understand and it comes from understanding yourself first because if you're able to understand your own feelings why you feel how you feel. I, I said this, I've, I think, in every session since we started this emotional um, growth series. You must know you. You have to understand you, why you feel what you feel. That is the foundation. Why you feel what you feel. A bear on welcome, welcome, Voke, Odom, welcome. I'm glad that you all join me this afternoon so if you are able to understand you while you why you feel the things you feel 
Why is it that when this person does so, so, and so, it triggers me and I become angry? Why? It's not the person's fault, the other person. It's not that other person's fault. It's you that needs to figure out what is it about this action that is upsetting me. Once you're able to do this, <laughs> honestly, people lose their grip on you. People lose their hold on you. They can't control your emotions any longer. And if you're able to understand you, it becomes easier to understand the other person. Why they are feeling the way they are feeling. Why they are reacting the way they are reacting. Why they are thinking possibly what they are thinking. And you can be empathetic when you have this understanding. So that is cognitive empathy the second component of empathy is emotional empathy now this is where you go beyond just understanding what people are feeling and feel with them what they're feeling there's a this um i think it was um somebody gave a talk one of these ted talks i'm trying to remember the name of the person if i remember i'll say it if not well please i'm still giving you your credit um, it was a TED talk and she tried to describe the difference between empathy and sympathy. And the way she described it was sympathy is that you see somebody, you know, maybe a person fell into a ditch. Sympathy, you're up on top where you are and you're like, oh my God, you fell into this ditch. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, how do, what do we do? How can we help? We are just up there talking. Maybe you're looking for solution. Maybe you're not. That is not the um, focus. But you're up there. Just talking to the person. Empathy is like you get into that ditch. Whether you physically get into the ditch or emotionally get in there. But you get into that ditch with that person. And you understand that they are confused. You understand that they are upset. You understand that their brain right now is you know, firing at all, you know, on all cylinders. And they are not properly coordinating their thoughts. And you get into that ditch with them. And you help them figure a way out. That's the difference between empathy. And sympathy when you sympathize with people you don't want to you know feel what they are feeling no you truly don't you understand their feeling yes but you don't want to get in there with them you don't want to you know get in that model of emotions with them no so emotional empathy is being able to feel what others are feeling being able to go through the gamut of emotions along with the person. Being able to connect on that level of feelings with the person. Truly, this is hard for someone that's not your friend. I will not even tell you otherwise. It is hard to be emotionally empathetic with someone that's not your friend it's difficult it's difficult but it is doable it's doable but it is difficult because that le level of connection that level of emotion you usually don't have it for strangers you usually don't have it for people you don't know but you can if you work on it you can have a level of emotional empathy for strangers but of course there's no way to be like what you will have for someone that is your friend okay so that is emotional um yes connecting on the same level of feelings with others i love the way you put it but exactly being able to connect on the same level of feelings with others it's a gift if you can if you can you know uh, develop it and it will help you through situations that are that appear <laughs> impossible truly okay so the third yeah okay let me move on the third um, component of empathy is what is called compassionate empathy okay so this one um you're not just seeing you know 
They are not just feeling their feeling. They are not just, you know, participating. They are not just connecting. You're actually doing something about it. Just like the example I gave of the TED Talk the lady gave, you are not just on top feeling so sorry for the person that is trapped inside the ditch. You are able to get into the ditch and help them out. Many of us, we stop at that emotional level. In many situations, we stop at the emotional level of empathy. We don't take the next step. We have connected with them. You know, we are, we are feeling what they are feeling on the same level that we are feeling it, but we do nothing to help. We stop at that point of feeling. We do, there's no extra step. We don't go ahead and now help. Probably because of where we come from, the part of the world <laughs> where we come from, where you know many times we are weary to you know get in there and help people, but it's something that we have to do. It's something that will help you help you grow in your emotional um, state to help you grow your emotional state to help you you know be emotionally intelligent emotionally intelligent um because you see this thing called emotional intelligence <laughs> it gets you through those difficult work situations that is one place i know that my emotional intelligence has always been tested one is in the workplace two is in church I am telling you, especially women ministry. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you know, maybe if you don't have the kind of experiences that I have, but these are the places that have tested my emotional intelligence. These are the places that I've seen that it, it is so key to know what triggers you. I've I've come to know that um, you know, people think that I don't get upset, they think. People who know me, they feel ah, nothing obsessed this woman. She's always calm, always collected, always in charge of her emotions. It's not true to an extent, but it's because I have taken time and understood why things upset me. I, I don't focus on the person that's upsetting me. It's not important. It's really not whether you're a mean person, whether you are a bad person, whether you are whatever, it's not relevant to me. What is relevant to me is when, how am I reacting to your acting up? And why am I reacting to your acting up in that way? When I understand that, I can even help you out. I can even help you. Um, I think I've given this example before. One of the places I've worked, one lady that just from nowhere felt I was her biggest problem in that office. I was the reason, you know, she wasn't getting whatever she felt she should get from the on her own. She made up her mind on her own because we had no interactions that should give rise to that. We're not friends. We don't really connect too much. But we're in the same office, we greet, we go our ways. And initially, honestly, this thing was even upsetting me every day. I was getting angry about it. But, you know, one day, see this, I also, when I talk sometimes, I have to keep coming back to the spiritual aspect. That's why we're going to dedicate the next ser series to spiritual growth. Because it's also very, very, very important. I... The lady disgraced me. I think I've told this story before. In, in the front of the office where people are moving about, she just came out shout, no, shouting at me, accusing me of things that I don't even know anything about, but in front of people. And the funny thing is that if you had come there that day, if you had been in that environment, you'd be wondering who is she talking to? Because I did not talk back. I did not respond, not because what to say was not in my mouth. So it was here at the tip of my tongue. It was right there. It was right there. But I didn't say anything to her. I did not respond. I did not react. It was even other people that were not defending me. So any stranger that walked in would be thinking maybe it's the other person she's talking to. 
and as she finished her tirade and you know her strep, she walked away. And me, I turned and walked into my office. But as I was walking into my office, I made up my mind I have cut this relationship. See, any anything I will do that will help her finished, no more. Any interaction between two of us, no more. I cancelled it. In my head, it was done, finished. But now this is where the spiritual growth <laughs> though we've not gotten to it but you know it's connected to this ability to feel what others are feeling the holy spirit prompted me you know told me some things to do but i couldn't do those things until i put myself in her shoes because he had shown me one or two things about her and had pointed me to people also that told me one or two things about her until I could feel what she was feeling until I could put myself in her shoes and understood where she was coming from I couldn't do the things that the Holy Spirit asked me to do I couldn't but immediately I could put myself in her shoes and understood where she was coming from and also understood what upset me in what she did I am the one that even started the reconciliation steps because that was the instruction that was given to me by the Holy Spirit. Anyway, I started the reconciliation and you know, we reconciled. And fact, if anybody tell, told you later on that these two people ever had an issue, you wouldn't believe because we were now best of friends. And you know, later on, you know, we lost contact, but you know, she recontacted me through Facebook and was telling me how she, you know, how her life was so good afterwards and all that. But you see, if I hadn't put myself in her shoes, yes, the Holy Spirit had told me the solution. No? He had given me, this is what you need to do to make this right. But initially, I couldn't understand why I should because I couldn't put myself in her shoes. Once I was able to do that, I could now carry out the instructions. And that relationship saved, of course, me first <laughs> because all the feelings, all the vexation, all those things were gone. Saved her second because later on in life, she became a Christian and she keeps what she tells me that she, you know, relates it back to that encounter and other things that happened in her life. Now see the effect, multiplier effect of just that one action of empathy. Okay, so um, it's encouraged that we have at least two aspects of this, of emotional intelligence, I'm um, sorry, empathy, <laughs> two components should exist either the cognitive emotional compassionate at least two should be operational if the three can be operational best okay so um Uzo says that's the definition of emotional intelligence understanding why someone is acting up and not reacting but empathizing with them and the problem exactly exactly so it's not just why is this person behaving like this? Oh, she's so rude. Oh, she's so... Why is she so rude? Does she have some maybe family issues? Is she under any kind of stress at the moment? Why is she so rude? All right. So how do we build this empathy so that I don't... Yeah. Okay. My time is flying. How do we build... <laughs> how do we build empathy? I hope we're enjoying this... Um, um, this session, I know that emotional intelligence is, is, is an interesting area, is an interesting topic, is an interesting area. And um, many people don't bother with it. Uh, we, don't, we don't have time for all that, <laughs> most of us, but it is essential, it's important. You will meet people that if you don't have emotional intelligence, they will destroy you. You yourself is the one that will be hurt in it. It is you that will suffer the hurt. It is you that will suffer the problem or the issue, not even the person. You know, that's the thing about <laughs> um, dealing with people. Most times, you hurt yourself more than you hurt the other person. 
and you think you're hurting the other person, but you are the one suffering it more. Okay, so how do we build this empathy? Because it's not carry come. <laughs> very few people, <laughs> very few people are born being empathetic. Most of us we are born being selfish. We want, you know, to take care of me, you know, but empathy can be developed can be built before i even go i'm surprised that nobody has noticed my shirts for some time nobody has commented this is my people is now we are not looking very well is it that the shirt is not showing ah, we are moving to permanent site too yes we are moving quickly to permanent sites so let me continue how to build empathy um one like you must be willing to share and understand your own feelings. That is number one. Understand your own feelings. Why you feel what you feel. Why you react how you react. And be willing to share it. There's a difference between, okay, I understand my feelings and being able to say it out. Some of us, we are not able to share what we are feeling. But for you to be able to develop empathy, you do need to begin to... Um, not only understand your feeling, but to be able to share it, to be able to say out what um, you're feeling. Um, then connect with people. Just find opportunities to connect with people. Find opportunities to interact with people. You can't be empathetic if you don't know anybody. Who are you being empathetic towards if you don't have re um, interactions with people? If you don't have interactions with people, how are you going to be empathetic? So you do have to put yourself out there. Okay, thank you, Chibike. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you, Agatha. I'm glad you joined this afternoon. Well done to you also. So yes, if you are not out there meeting people, if you are not putting yourself in situations where you are interacting with people, you can't understand their feelings. How do you, when you expose yourself to different people, different kinds of people, different, um, um, I don't want to say grades of people, but we understand what I'm saying. You, you expose yourself to the big, you expose yourself to the small, you expose yourself to the rich, you expose yourself to the poor, you expose yourself to the knowledgeable, to the educated, you expose yourself to the uneducated. You build a, you know, a rich um, knowledge base of people's emotions, people's feelings. So by interacting more with people, you are actually able or more able to develop empathy. But if you surround yourself with only people who are like you, where will you get the information to be empathetic? So you need to be able to expose yourself to different kinds of people. Another way to build empathy is to listen, listen to people listening heartfelt listening not you know you're listening for your next point no when people talk to you truly listen listen with your ears listen with your eyes and listen with your heart i know somebody who said you listening with your eyes <laughs> because they're supposed to see with your eyes but there are, there are people that they are saying one thing with their lips but their eyes are telling you something different if you're not looking, you won't know. I've had people sit with me and they are telling me you know, something that's happening to them. And their lips are saying that they are okay. You know, this happened, but it's fine. You know, it's one of those things I understand. That's what their lips are saying. But their eyes are telling me that this person is not okay. All right, I have a question. Let me just look at it quickly. Um, Florence says, how do you handle someone that just hates you for no just cause at work and will always seek to make issues with you? I think I kind of answered this question with the example I gave. I have, see, these people will exist. The first thing you need to understand is why is this person hating you? What is it? What is it about you? Not saying that the fault is yours, 
the fault is not yours. What they're even hating on could be something good. It could just be that they're jealous of you. That is why you need to understand why they're hating you or why they're being hateful to you. So the first is to try to understand the why. Why is it that this person is hateful? Two, try to know about this person. Like in the example I gave, I asked indirectly. I didn't want to you know, just come right out and be asking questions about this young lady that disgraced me. You understand? But I, you know, somehow, somehow, the people who are close to her found a way to just get an, her background. What kind of, you know, what kind of home did she come from? You know, things like that. Um, she came from, okay, for example, let me go back to that example. She came from a home that was um, broken. No, was it, was it broken, they call it? She, you know, like they had, the, fa the father married many wives. Yeah. So she was used to conflict. Her life is conflict. Her life is trouble. I don't know if you understand me. That was what she was used to. So she just didn't even know any other way to deal with people. Everybody was a competition to her. She was in competition with everyone. So once she sees somebody apparently doing better, she just has to, you know, we have to fight this out. That was that particular person. But if I hadn't found that, that about her, we would have just continued our beef, as they say. We would have continued the quarrel. But I took our time to try and understand what is it about me, Sam, that's making this person just not like, what is it? And it wasn't, and it, like I said, it turned out not to be that I was doing anything wrong. It turned out to be that because of the kind of family she came from, this was just her go-to. This was just the way she felt. You know, once she sees anybody she thinks is challenging her, she just has to go into, you know, that fight mode. So first of all, find out why this person is hating on you. What's the reason? What's the cause? If you are able to find this out, then you might be able to know how to relate with that person. There are some people, truly, honestly, there are some people you are not meant to be friends with. Understand that. And if maybe this person happens to be somebody that you are not meant to be friends with, keep it professional and move on. But you can't know this if you don't take time to try and find out. So, you know, there's no one size fits all answer for this. Try and, you know, find out about that person. Try and dig a little bit and know why is it that they are hating on you? you no, know, what kind of background do they come from? What kind of family life do they have? These things will help you know whether this is someone you should even, you know, go ahead and try and make your friend, or whether it's someone that you should just remain colleagues with. Everybody will not like you. I hope we know. Even with your best empathetic, you know, <laughs> actions, some people will still not like you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Move on with your life. So um, that would be my advice to you, Florence. I hope that helped. I want to believe that that helped you to... Um, please, if it didn't help you, let me know. You can put back um, the comments if it didn't help you. But this is what I think you should do. Once you are able to get this out, um, you would know the next step. You can now know whether to put this person as just you know colleague. Our relationship is strictly professional or this is someone that you should actually befriend and um, have a better working relationship with all right so i was talking about how to build empathy oh charity welcome glad you joined us i don't know what you're agreeing 100 percent with but thank you <laughs> thank you for agreeing 100 percent um look i was talking about listening yeah that was where I was. I was talking about listening to people. This would also help you, Florence. Yeah, it will help. The reaction is actually, like, exactly. Jealousy. 
You see, it, sometimes that's just what some people is that's their problem. They feel that they should be where you are. But unfortunately, they are not. You are the one that is, you know, in front. You are the one that is doing well. Try not to uh, be in their face about your, you know, activities or your being ahead of them. Try not to be in their face about it. But don't also put on the brakes and stop doing the best that you can. Of course not. You can't, you can't um, reduce your light because of others. Keep your light shining, but don't go and shine it right into their eyes. Since you know that her issue is that of jealousy, don't go shining your light into her eyes or his eyes. I don't know if it's a he or she, but you know, keep, keep, um, keep your relationship with them as um, friendly as possible without getting too close. Maintain it you know, at that professional level as much as possible. And, you know, as you go on, if an opportunity exists for you to help her, help her. If there's an opportunity for you to be of help, be of help. Do what you can for that person, but don't, you know, put yourself out there, one, for them to now, you know, pour out their troubles or issues on you. Neither you know, shine your light right into their eyes to cause problems. Okay. Uh, Joy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You said I'm looking so good. Thank you very much. I appreciate. I appreciate. Um, yes, I was talking about listening, right? Yes, listening. And I said you, can, you have to listen with your ears, listen with your eyes, listen with your heart. This is what leads to empathy. Listen with your ears, hear what the person is saying. Listen with your eyes, see their reactions, their facial reactions. Well, you're welcome, Florence. I'm glad to have helped you. See their reactions. And then listen with your heart. Read in between the lines of what they are saying. I gave us the example of someone that was, you know, telling me someone was like, oh, I'm okay, ma, I'm good. But I'm looking at their face. I'm looking into their eyes and I'm seeing deep sadness. And you can't be good. And then your eyes are seeing different. So when we listen to people, we need to listen with our ears, listen with our eyes, listen with our heart. That way we are able truly to empathize you can't empathize with someone if you don't feel what they are feeling okay so listen 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 to listen i've talked about talking to new and different people don't restrict yourself to the same set of or group of friends you will not develop empathy because you are just dealing with the same kind of you know emotions the same kind of everything you need to be able to mix with different kinds of people and um if we practice these things basically we will find ourselves in a place where we are able to empathize with others and truly it makes it makes relationships sweet. I can't even think of another word right now. It makes relationships sweet. It makes it easier when you're able to put yourself in other people's shoes. When you're able to, even if it's just for that moment, forget your own feelings per se and just um, feel the other person's pain, feel the other person's pain point. I understand what is going on with that other person. I've, <laughs> I've been in a situation of serious pain and distress myself, myself, going through something hard. But at the same time, I had to sit with someone that was going through their own pain. And I had to, in the midst of my own pain, see them through their pain. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But it is doable. And it happened because I had trained myself to always at least try to put myself in other people's shoes. 
before I condemn them, <laughs> before I, you know, package them off as, you know, this person is not worth my time, before I tie you up in that bundle and put you to the side, I make the attempt to put myself in your shoes first. And if I'm able to put myself in your shoes and I'm able to understand a bit of what is happening with you, then for sure, our relationship will definitely be better. As I said, this helps in the workplace. I've experienced it severally. It helps in church settings when you're dealing, you know, in groups in churches. Helps a whole lot. A whole, whole lot. So, we have come to the end. Yes, with that, we have come to the end of our discussion this afternoon yes thank you all so much for showing up nobody still commented about my shirts for the past at least three if not four is it up i think up to four sessions hmm. please notice our growth habits shirts like i said with my name on the other side we are moving to our permanent site quickly <laughs> Yes, thank you all once again for joining me. There is a link in this um, in this video to our Facebook page, to our Facebook group, and to our YouTube channel. Please click on those links and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's grow that too and reach a new set of audiences um, from there. On the YouTube, I don't share this live there, but those short, short... Um, um, videos that I do, those are what I share. <laughs> Just, okay, no problem. <laughs> those are what I share on the YouTube. I will send your own shirts, don't worry. Very soon, every member of Growth Habits will have their own Growth Habits shirts. T-shirt or button-down shirt like this. Yes, I will send your own, Ugozi, for sure. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Oh, you, mm -hmm. now you're talking. It's now all of you are waking up. <laughs> Thank you all very much once again. Thank you, Major, for joining me this afternoon. As I say, I always appreciate your time. I know you could be doing any other thing right now, but you choose to join me right here on Facebook Live. Thank you all so much. Remember, why you should truly, you have to join the uh, group because very soon, this broadcast, this live will be happening from that group, not from my personal Facebook page. So please go ahead, click that link, join the Growth Habits with Ngozi Facebook group. Like the page, but join the group. Ensure that you join the group. And normally in the group, after these live sessions, there will be a message for you to share what you learned around 2 p.m. or so. That message will be on the um, Growth Habits group. So please comment. Um, comment there on Fridays. We we are, there's a post that asks us to you know share maybe the book you're reading, your favorite mo uh, song or something. So let's keep that group interactive. Don't just read and pass because what I'm seeing that the people who are already there they read those posts and they just like it or something and move on. Comment so that it will be lively so that we'll keep the conversation going there so once again i'm so 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 glad to have been with you all to have shared this time with you all thank you for joining me. oh thank you mike thank you so much thank you for joining me yes this is growth habits with ngozi every tuesday um afternoon 12 noon like i think i mentioned this last time but because i'm not yet sure we might shift the time a bit not yet sure but um once i confirm that we are shifting the time i will let us know in advance thank you for joining me once again and those that are watching on the replay thank you thank you thank you and have a beautiful beautiful day bye